So in the last two videos, we used these uh, triple five timers to build an A-stable circuit with the pulsing uh, output and a monostable circuit that's normally off, but when we push the button, it turns on and it's debounced so that uh, you know we get a single clean output when we push the button. Uh, so this we can use for our clock, and then we can also use for a manual pulse. Now what we need to do is figure out a way to switch between the two. And so you might think, well, we should use a, a switch. And I've got a, a pretty good switch here. This is a, a little push button switch and it's either out or in, and it's got these three leads. And so there's a center, um, there's a center common pin, and then it's connected to either uh, this pin or this pin, depending on whether it's in or out. And uh, there's, there's two, so that's double throw, it's called. And then it's double pull as well. There's sort of two sets that are independent uh, that are just connected to the same button. Uh, so double pull, double throw, and it's a fairly common type of switch. This is another switch here that's the same thing, and you've got the, the two sets of three uh, connections there. Of course, this doesn't plug into my breadboard. And annoyingly, neither does this. This is actually just a little bit too, this pin spacing is a little bit too close together uh, to fit into the breadboard. And so what I've done is gone ahead and soldered uh, these little header pins to the switch. Uh, and so that fits in very nicely into, into the breadboard. And so one thing we could do is we could just connect the uh, output of, you know, this here. Well, that's not the output. Let's connect the output of that to one side of the switch. And we could connect the output of, uh, of our manual uh, trigger over here to the other side of the switch. And then, you know, we could look at the middle of the switch connect that to, uh, you know, an LED. And then, of course, our current limiting resistor here. And we see that it's pulsing. And then we could flip the switch here, and now it's connected to our manual clock pulse. And we could flip it back, and it's connected to the, you know, sort of automatic <laughs> clock pulse there. So this is great, we could, we could use this, this will work. Uh, one problem with it is, you know, again, we have the switch in here that's not debounced. And so we could have some situation where, you know, maybe we have a really slow clock pulse and we're going step by step by step and we wanna, we're watching our computer execute. Maybe we're, we're, we're troubleshooting some problem and we're, we're watching it go step by step and then we see, we see the problem that we're trying to catch develop and we push the button to try to get it back into manual clock pulse to stop the computer and so we can figure out what's going on. Well, if when we push that, we have that debouncing problem and we, we get a couple extra clock pulses in there <laughs> when we were going so slow to catch that one point uh, that, we're trying to, that we're trying to catch, that could be really frustrating. So we really should uh, find a way to debounce this switch. And you could build exactly this circuit and that would work fine. Um, I'm gonna show you a different way uh, to use the triple five just, just for fun, just to see yet another use for the triple five. And so for this next circuit, what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna take advantage of the fact that the triple five timer has an SR uh, latch built into it. Um, and we're, we're really only gonna use the SR latch. We're just gonna kinda try to ignore the rest of this stuff as much as we can. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, basically hook this switch up to, um, you know, imagine we could somehow get rid of all this stuff and just hook the switch up to the S and the R. So in one, in one state it's, it's setting and in the other, state it's resetting, and then we have our output. Uh, the SR latch will, will actually act as a debouncer. And uh, one of the reasons it'll do that is kind of a property of these switches, which is if we look at the switch, if I just hook up a couple LEDs so we can kind of examine uh, what the, how the switch normally works, what you'll see is that you know it switches between the two states when we push the switch, which is, which is what you'd expect. But if we push it very gently, you see it actually, that you can kind of get it in between and it turns off. And that, that's actually a pretty useful property. So it's called break before make. And you can buy switches that are make before break if, if that's what you want. But I think most switches are, are typically break before make. And so what that means is that, you know, it can be, you know, if, we, if this is say our reset or our set uh, uh, condition, let's say we're putting a set into this SR latch, forget the fact that it's part of a 505, just, just imagine we're looking at an SR latch. If we're setting it and then we start to push this switch, as we let go, or it's not as we let go, as, as, we, as we push the switch gently, we're kind of in this middle region 
uh, our latch is still going to be set, right? And then as we continue to push the switch down, we get into the reset, um, then that reset comes on. Well, if there's any bouncing in the switch, it doesn't matter because as soon as that first reset happens, the latch is reset and, uh, and our output is going to be off. And then the same thing as we push this and then as we gently let go, the reset goes off. We're still reset, right? Because we haven't set it yet. And then even if there's some bouncing as we go into the set state, doesn't matter because as soon as it first sees that set state, boom, the output comes on. So we can use an SR latch as a debouncer with a switch like this. So the question is, you know, if we're using a 5.5, well, we could use a, just an SR latch on its own, uh, which, you know, I've got a video that shows how to build one. Uh, but, you know, we can, we can use the 5.5 timer, uh, we can use its SR latch uh, by essentially using the trigger, right? So remember, we've got uh, 5 volts up here, right? And then we've got this voltage divider network. So this gives us 3.33 uh, volts here and 1.6667 volts here. And then of course, zero volts down here. And so if this trigger goes below 1.6 volts, then that sets the latch. And then if the threshold goes above 3.3 volts, that resets it. But we're actually gonna ignore the threshold. We're gonna, we're gonna just tie this to ground. And so this'll never, this'll never do anything. Instead, we're going to use pin 4, which we haven't used yet on the 555, and that's this reset pin. And it, you know, it's not wired exactly like this in here, but you can kind of imagine it. Uh, but this, this just gives you kind of a shortcut to the reset. <clears throat> and so if we pull pin 4 low, uh, because it's inverted, that resets it. And if we pull the trigger low, below 1.6 volts, that will turn this comparator on and set it. And so that gives us a way to kind of get into this, this SR latch. And so what we can do is we can hook our switch up, uh, sort of draw the switch down here. <clears throat> and so we can hook our switch to ground, the middle uh, connection of our switch to ground, and we hook one side up over to our reset and hook the other side over to our trigger. And then if we flip our switch over to this side, That'll ground the trigger, which takes this now below 1.6 volts. We should probably have a, a little pull-up resistor here of some sort. Maybe a 1K resistor will do. So that normally, you know, this is going to be uh, 5 volts. So it'll be well above our 1.6 volts. And so this will be off. And so we won't be setting it. But then when we flip our switch here and this goes to ground, that'll pull this down to 0 volts. And 0 volts, of course, is below 1.6 volts. And so that'll set the 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 flip-flop and the output will turn on. Uh, and then when we flip our switch over to the other side, you know, we do that break before make, which, you know, this, this diagram actually shows pretty well. Uh, when we break, you know, no big deal. We're not setting it anymore, uh, but it's a latch, so the output stays set. But then when we first make contact over here, even if it bounces, it doesn't matter. The first time we make contact over here, we reset the latch and then the output turns off. And so we have this nice debouncing uh, that, that we can use. So let's, uh, let's hook that up. Okay, here it is. So we got our switch here, and the center pin is connected to ground, which, uh, which is what we wanted here. And uh, the, the, the other two pins, one is connected uh, over here, you can see to pin two, and the, the other one's connected to pin four. And so just like we've got here, so one's connected over here to pin two, that's our trigger, and the other one's connected <laughs> over here to pin four. And uh, on both of those, I have pull-up resistors. So you can see on, on pin two and pin four, I've got a resistor going to five volts. I, I didn't draw that over here, but you know, we wanna make sure that these are normally uh, getting five volts unless our switch is set. Pin three, of course, is our output. So I just have that going to this LED for now with a current limiting you know, 220 ohm resistor uh, over there. And then uh, you know, pin uh, six is our threshold, so we have that just at ground. So this comparator is never going to be uh, is never going to be on. So we don't have this resetting this way. The only way we're resetting the only way we're resetting the the latch is through our through our reset pin. Uh, so threshold is is uh, to ground, and then uh, pin seven is our discharge pin. No need to connect that. We're not discharging anything. There's no capacitor in here. Uh, we're just uh, so we just leave that disconnected. And then uh, pin five, as usual, we have our little 0.01 microfarad capacitor in there for, you know, for noise uh, as recommended. So now what we've got is <laughs> you push the button, the light comes on. Push the button again, the light turns off. 
So not very exciting, but uh, it is fully debounced and we're, we're using the SR latch part of the 555 timer. And so with that, we've actually got the sort of three different modes that you can use the 555 timer in. We've got the A-stable mode where it's not stable in either state. We've got the monostable mode where it's got one stable state, which is off. And then when we push this, it goes to its other state, but then reverts back to the, the state that it's stable in. And then this is the bistable mode where it has two stable states. And so it's either in this state or that state. And so now all we need is a bit of logic to combine all three of these into our final clock output. And uh, we'll do that in the next video.